What up, everybody? Hey, it's the Sports Chasers Podcast coming to you live and direct. This is this podcast where the sports podcast, where there's no hot takes, no hot takes, no nonsense when it comes to sports. It's the Sports Chasers Podcast. It is currently 741 out here in the East, 641 out here for my central folks, 541 for the mountain people. Uh, Except for Phoenix, people in Arizona, and 441 out there for my West Coast people. It's the Sports Chasers Podcast, and this week, yo, we'll be diving into a couple things. Hey, we'll be talking about uh, the NBA playoffs are in full swing. My Knicks got one last night in Madison Square Garden against Trey Young and the Hawks. We'll be talking also about the National uh, Hockey League playoffs, uh, Islanders events, uh, a couple other teams events. Uh, so we'll talk about that. We're also we're gonna revisit Tim to- Tim Tebow. Uh, what's the difference between him and another athlete that gets another chance in sports? Just saying. We'll talk about the PGA Championship. Phil Mickelson winning. He's the oldest guy to win a uh, PGA Championship at age 50. And we'll talk about the mini beef between him and Brooks Kepka um, during the um, during the golf match. We'll also talk about our MLB Power 20. Uh, Julio Jones said on live TV with Shannon Sharp the other day, he said he's out. Um, we'll also talk about, we and I added this today, fan behavior at sporting events. We're gonna talk about that earlier. And we'll talk about what's the appropriate way to criticize or critique an athlete. So with that said, going from my right, my left to right, we'll start with D-Dub. What's up? What up, what up, what up, what up, man? Sports Chasers Podcast. One, one more time, we're back in the building. Good to see you. <clears throat> no doubt, we here, we here. Hey, we got next up the angry one, James Eric. What's up? What up, what up, what up? Sports Chasers family, what's really good, man? Salute Kev, salute D. Let's get it cracking. Yeah, man, we here, we live. We getting ready to do it, do it, do it. We're minus two of our peeps today as the music fades out. Uh, we're minus Mike Mills uh, um, this week and uh, the DA. Um, they won't be with us this week, man, but we're still charging on and going on. And um, the three of us, um, we're going to tackle it and and go get it and see what's up, man. But um, I want to start off with uh, uh, two things um, first. And the last one, the, the last topic I talked about was the, um, what's the appropriate way to criticize and critique an athlete? Um, and this topic was breached or broached because of, um, if you've been hiding under a rock for the last week and change, um, Kwame Brown has been well, those that don't know Kwame Brown, Kwame Brown is an ex-NBA basketball player. He had um, he came out as the number one pick, I believe, in 2002 or three. Got selected by the Washington um, Wizards. He had a um, 12, 13 year career. He played in the NBA. Um, there was lofty expectations from him, and you know he came out of high school in South Carolina, and um, he was selected number one. And um, he drew a lot of heat and a lot of criticism when he um, came out. And long story short, for those that don't know, um, he's been a butt of a bunch of jokes for the last 20 years. Um, and it came to a, a powder keg, um, so to speak, on um, the um, All the Smoke um, podcast with Matt Barnes and um, Steven Jackson. And um, that's pretty much where we're at. And some of those things, um, I'm not really here to talk about, we're not here to really talk about Kwame Brown, but what's the appropriate way to critique an athlete and, you know, when things are personal, when things are not, I know we're just, you know, this, this, this sports, this podcast right here, yo, we just really talk about things in between the lines, you know, on the rink, 
on the basketball court, football field, baseball diamond, golf course, horse race track, whatever. That's how we keep it because we uh, we're not TMZ, man. So with that said, we'll start with D Dub. Go ahead. Yo, this is kind of what we did uh, while we started this, man. We got, we were so disgusted with all the hot takes, all this, all the nonsense. It was coming to a point where it was like, we was talking, it was like, we seen the change of sports. We seen the, the change of uh, how they was talking sports and how they was almost telling us what they thought instead of us telling them, giving us, giving them the feedback. But um, uh, getting back to, the critique of an athlete, I mean, you should just be talking about the game, his game, what he did that day, the the analytics the of of his game. But it seemed to get where people were really getting really disrespectful. And I think that's where the, the line is drawn when people was getting very personal. And listen, nobody likes to be bullied. Nobody did. And this <clears throat> disrespected. I don't care how bad you may be, but that that is the problem. And um, for Kwame Brown, it got to the point where you know what I think. You know, you know, you get to the point where you fed up. You know, what I'm saying it's just that day. That day, today was the day. And you know, he's like enough is enough, and I'm not gonna let it ride. And this and this is what happens. So there you have it. Um, uh, Eric, your thoughts? Yeah, I, I'll say this, man. Um, especially here lately, um, you know, amongst the, my fellow podsmen, I always say, you know, I try to um, use choice words, you know what I'm saying? And not try to put everybody into this pot when it's not supposed to be, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, to critique an athlete is just like what Daryl said, man. You know, you, you talk about the game or whatever the area that they're in. You talk about their productivity or their lack thereof. And and you know, why not give points on how to be better? You know what I'm saying? Instead of trying to tear a man or woman or a child down. That, that All of that is unnecessary. You know what I'm saying? Oh, he's trash or he's this and he's that. Now, honestly, it, it, you really, it really shouldn't even be or had, shouldn't even be taken that far because the man had a career. And, you know, with the example of Kwame Brown, yo, the man played, what, 13 years? Played 13 12, years? 12. 12 years? Yo, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. Um, you, what you think your uh, overall number one um, draft pick should be, no, he didn't have those numbers, but yet um, once he found his niche, once he found that team, once he found that system to be in, then, then he started He started moving, you know what I'm saying? I mean, the man had injuries coming into the league, but nobody seemed like nobody wants to talk about that. He had to address that, no, you know what I'm saying, um, to clear his name up for a little bit. Go ahead. But, E, um, let, let me interject this, uh, interject this too. Um, as we talk about on this podcast, right, um, sometimes the player, when they come out of college or when they get selected, they don't go to the right place, to the right system we say that about quarterbacks um, we we look we look at the new york <laughs> jets right their quarterback now they got traded they traded to, to carolina mm -hmm. he was underneath the the guys of adam gates what did adam gates ever do and that's the thing kev we always blame we blame the athlete but how is it that we don't blame the coaches we don't blame the 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 uh the scouting people uh we don't blame none of these people. The the de developmental of a player, the development of a player. We never blame none of these people. We blame the athlete. Now, do do they have a, a they they do have a a Cold part into it? Yes. Build, right. However, but we we never look around the situation and getting back to my man Sam Donald. They they almost they try to do that to him. Try to say he's he's not a good player. But look at the situation he's in. Come on, you can't do that. Uh, and, and let me, let me, and, and so let me stand to the screen. Let me look right to the screen. Um, to those, let me get this microphone up a little bit closer. Um, I'm gonna go home to where you at in corporate America, right? Uh, whatever your vocation or whatever you at, right? Usually, right, you come into a corporation or, or organization, 
you know, most are mentored, hopefully, right? To make sure that they're, you know, doing the right thing and they're guided along because, you know, you know, most jobs are what a career, right? Right. So you select those that, you know, that's going to, you know, guide those along, those going to mentor those along, man, and make sure that these people are doing the right, right thing. And as I, as I stated, um, I, the perfect example, Sam Donald, man, you know, they're trying to say that he was trash. Nah, he went to a awful situation with the New York Jets. And there's a reason why the Jets keep picking number ones and, and quarterbacks and things of that nature, because, you know, they're not a very, um, they're not a well-run organization, unfortunately. And this is what you get. So, And immediately they try to railroad Sam Donald. Kudos, yeah. I'm glad, and I hope he balls out in Carolina. I hope he balls out in Carolina. Yep. Because um, yeah. that's what happened so many times. Uh, we talked about, what's the man's name that was at Washington, e, that, your boy? Uh, Jason Campbell. Jason Campbell. <clears throat> Explain it. Can you can you explain Jason that? Jason Campbell was drafted. I don't remember the year offhand, but he was drafted into the Joe Gibbs second run with the then Washington Redskins. You mean and the it Joe was, Gibbs with that did NASCAR? <laughs> yeah, Na- yeah. NASCAR. Yeah. Joe I was gonna say NASCAR. They because they ran him right into they ran him right into the ground. He had a total of three, not one, in in the words of said player not one not two but three offensive coordinators in two years this man did not know his name from the hole in the side of his in, in his ear come on man i mean really and let's let's be clear let's be clear care brought up a point about corporate america right at any job everybody everybody be truthful okay any job that you ever been to that you that you somewhat like and you wanted to advance and they didn't give you none of the tools for you to advance. Didn't that leave a, a sour taste in your mouth? Didn't that kind of like turn you off? Yeah, you did your job, but you didn't go your full 100 after that. So it's the same thing with these players. Yes, they're getting, some are getting thousands, some are getting millions of dollars, but it's the same, it's the same thing. It's just on a grander scale because we see these guys, this is uh, something that we love. So we, 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 we criticize, we critique their play and pro- productivity versus their contracts and all this other stuff. However, they are still human beings. Let me, let me interject this too, as I'm, I'm doing both hats tonight. Also, what do we hold the quote unquote experts that, uh-oh, <laughs> my, <laughs> my mind's been looking around. What do we hold the so-called experts that say, hey, I, that person's going to be number two, that person's going to be number one, you know, because they pretty much are like almost like um, people like in the stock market, right? You got people in the stock market, right? I, I've been following the stocks, been doing cryptocurrency, you know, all that stuff, Bitcoin and things of that nature, right? And, you know, mm-hmm. I have, you know, I won't say on the air who I follow, man, but, you know, I got people that I believe that they got their ear to the financial world and they know what's going to pop and they're going to know what's not going to pop. And I follow them. What's the difference between them and say, you know, I'm not going to call them names. Maybe you guys will, but you know, those that say, Hey, this person's going to go number one. He's number one. He's this, he's that. And well, here on the the sports chases podcast, (laughs) we could, we critique everything and everybody when it comes to sports, even the, the said guy that Kev just brought up, these guys that sit on TV, these draft experts, Oh, he's tremendous. He can sit in the pocket. He can make every play. He can make every throw. This and that, the third. I remember one particular <laughs> Bill Kuiper. <laughs> Bill Kuiper. <laughs> um, said that, call. Um, the future Hall of Famer. Everybody's <laughs> saying the future Hall of Famer in um, I don't forget his name. Kansas City Chiefs. Help me out. It's been a long day. Oh, oh, uh, oh Mahomes. Pat Mahomes. Yeah, Patrick. Yeah, thank you. Patrick Mahomes. He said that he was going to be a bus. Nobody, nobody is dragging Mel Kuyper through the mud now, is he? I don't see nobody tearing him down, talking about his father and talking about his mother and talking about his kids and nothing like that. No, it, it's only, again, and I hate to make it a black, white thing, but it is only when it comes to black athletes that you see this happen. Let's give you another example. Ryan Leaf. Thanks. Ryan Leaf. Ooh, you understand Michael. what I'm saying? You, you might hear Jamarcus Russell every so often. 
but you don't, you know, they, they, they tore him down quite a bit. Um, but getting back to a white, compared to a white athlete, Ryan Leaf, you don't hear nothing about him. Uh, Tim Couch is another number one overall quarterback that was picked. Number uh, one. Browns, what happened? I, what happened but, to, um, 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 I don't remember where he got drafted at. Brady Quinn. He didn't last long. Nope. He's up there trying to be with us, trying to trying to analyze sports. Yeah. So again, nobody yeah. talking about that guy. Nope. Come on, man. <laughs> what we doing? I, hey, I got all night, man. I, hey, hey. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just facts. And so when when you got a Kwame Brown, it's like, yo, enough is enough. You know, your your jokes is old. You know, I'm sitting over here minding my business. This is again, I don't, for all you guys that listens. The last thing I said was, mind your business. Mind your business. And apparently, people cannot do it. They can't do it to save their lives. And you know what? A lot of people got chopped up in this in this uh, Kwame Brown uh, cyclone. There was, there was he, a lot of casualties, dog. And as he said, he gave some of y'all. Mama's cooking. Mama's cooking. Mm-hmm. Gave y'all the business. Just because why? You thought. It was, and everything he said is 100% facts. I don't care what nobody said. This is exactly why we came here to do our own thing because we got tired of these people um, with, the with the narratives, with the hot takes. And it, 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 at the end of the day, it's not becoming sports. It's not talking about, we. it, it became more TMZ. It, you know, these people at these uh, uh, sports, uh, these industry uh, like ESPN and, you know, you get these guys, they they're not real journalists. Some of them were journalists and then they, and then they 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 flip. Oh, they, so you guys are journalists? First of all, let me let me let's make this clear. None of us are journalists. We're on a podcast and we're talking. We there's nothing in politics here. We we doing our own thing. This is a hundred percent independent, and we do what we do. And which is we we give you the facts and then we give you our opinions based off of those facts. That's off what we facts. do here. And we ain't sitting here trying to cre- uh, 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 tear down somebody. Now, if you're talking about your game, if you had a horrible game, yo, you had a horrible game. I had no biz- I had no problem talking about Julius Randle in game one. Game one, he would tell you that his game wasn't up to par. He would tell you even last night he wasn't the Julius Randle of the New York Knicks of the whole entire the 2021 season. season, right? Exactly. So, right, right. so if he has a problem with me talking about his game, then then I can't help him, man. You just got a problem with someone. You just got a problem with constructive criticism. Nobody, nobody's tearing him down. His family, his beautiful uh, wife, son. I don't care nothing about that. That's not none of my business. Again, mind your mind business. your business. It's that his fan, personal stuff is none of my business. You understand? Right. Now, when I'm talking about your your game, with it, you play, it's just like anybody else at work. I'm going. We're going to critique your work. Period. Mm-hmm. Nobody's going. Nobody's. I'm at work. Nobody's talking about my family and uh. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, that's maybe a bad a bad example. But right, go ahead. right, right. Go ahead. <laughs> oh no, let me guys this and get this before um. Nah, that's that's what we just wanted to talk about, man. We want we wanted to talk about that. I'm glad we talked about that. And you know, we're a podcast. We absolutely have an opinion, and we're gonna give you the facts. We, you know, like I said, and we generally mean that. When I say when I open up and say every week, no hot takes. No, I know hot takes, man. No, nope, and, nope. and Kevin, I think the people generally, there's people, and I know because I hear it all the time. There's people that feel just like us, mm-hmm. and they've said it. So you know, again. You know, sometimes me and E talk about this. Sometimes you just got to turn the shit off. Turn it off. Turn it off. Turn the it power off. is in your hand. Yeah. We the people. Yeah. I don't even watch. Them. Half of these guys, I don't even watch no more. We because the of, people. We the people. It's real. That Yo, I'm telling you, 100%. And I listen to Quan. 100%. I think I agree with him about 98% of what he's saying is 100% facts. We the people. Um, let me go to topic number two real quick. Um, uh, let me read this uh, um, here. 
A Nick supporter was banned from Madison Square Garden indefinitely. Um, hold on, lost my place here. This is reports from the Daily News. After he was caught on video spitting at the back of Trey, uh, Trey Young towards the end of um, Wednesday's game two. I'm not gonna read the whole article. It's coming from the Daily News. Also, um, um, Westbrook was also involved. He wasn't involved somewhere. He was leaving the arena and he was, um, I believe it was popcorn, I believe. Popcorn, mm -hmm. somebody. Popcorn um, between the, the Wizards was playing last night against the, hold on, I don't have my screen up here. The Sixers. Oh, the Sixers yeah. last night. And so he got hurt and as he was leaving. Yep. Somebody dumped popcorn. So let me, over the let, me let me go first. This got much. Let me go first. If you're a person, I have attended many, many sport events, whether it's been sitting down or, you know, sometimes in my vocation has caused me to go there. If you don't know what I do, look it up. But I've had, I've, I've been at sport events. Um, you do not have the right to throw anything towards the field of play, on the ice, anything. If you're doing that, you need to be dealt with. You need to be banned from, I say you should be banned from every sporting event arena in America, including high school and Pee Wee. And you need to be arrested and dealt with because you're a schmuck, you're a POS and you don't get it. You can boo whatever they were saying, whatever the Trey Young, whatever, you know, sticks and stones. I got you. But once you start throwing stuff and spinning and things of that nature, Nobody deserves that. And like Michael Westbrook said, like uh, Russell, excuse me, Michael Westbrook. Russell Westbrook said it yesterday. He said that person would never do that if he was on the street. Never. If you're, hearing, if you're hearing me in the sound of my voice and you hear this podcast, and if you're that person, you need to reexamine your life and ask what is wrong with your life because you are a loser with a damn capital L, L-O-S-E-R, loser. Somebody else, uh, uh, Eric, go ahead. Yo, know, man, like, like, like you said, man, it's cool, you know, to have interaction with, with the other, the other team or whatever, the, the back and forth, you know, the, 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 it, it was cool to see Trey Young take yes. that step and be the new villain of the NBA, so to speak, you know, Reggie, Reggie yeah. Miller-esque. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and to have that happen, man, like, let's let's be clear. The, the incidents that happened in New York and happened in Philadelphia, um, unfortunately, um, it, it puts a, a bad taste in athletes' mouths, being that these are diehard cities. They care very much about their sports, but you have, unfortunately, some that take it too far. I'm going to just say this. Um, like Russell Westbrook said, you wouldn't dare do that to him on the street where, where, you know, all, you know, there's no holes barred. You wouldn't want nobody spitting on you or your mama or any of your family members. So why would you, why would you do that? That's disrespectful. You don't, nah, we don't do that. One, one thing that I always say on this podcast every so often is, um, have respect for your fellow man, your fellow one man and your child. Okay. Have some respect. You ain't got to like everybody, but you just respect them. He's there to play a game. That's what you want to call him. Oh, you suck or whatever, whatever. Okay, fine. But all that extra stuff, come on, man. Well, honestly, what I would have done now, I don't condone violence. <laughs> but I would have, it would have parted like the Red Sea and the player that got thrown at, spit on or anything like that. I would, everybody would have, would have parted. And let that man go deal with that, go deal with that person who did whatever they did. And I guarantee you it wouldn't happen again. Because this is where the, the 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 NBA, the NFL, or whoever, wherever the arena where it was held at, they need to do a better job of that. No, it doesn't happen all the time, but when it does happen, come on, this is the playoffs. Come on now. Don't come on. That 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 was the whole talk. It wasn't the talk of how Philadelphia dominated the Wizards. No, the talk was about the popcorn that got thrown on Russell Westbrook. Come on, man. Don't do that. Philadelphia, I've been there. It was a long time ago. I've been there. It's a beautiful city and all. They are diehard about this, about this Philadelphia sports. 
But I will say too that sometimes maybe the fans need to police themselves. Somebody should have grabbed that guy like, yo, you a jerk. So just sit down. Don't don't do that. Don't do that. Because you're making it, you're you're making a bad example out of everybody. Go to the game, watch the game, boo, whatever. But once you start throwing stuff and, and, and spitting and stuff like that, you should be dealt with accordingly. And you absolutely should be let out in handcuffs, or it should be a warrant for your arrest. D dub, go ahead. Yo. Trey Young had every right to run up in that stand, <laughs> told 50 Cent to move over, and his lady, yo, slide over, please. I seen him did it, and run up in the stands. And again, Eric, sometimes, yeah, I don't condone violence, but sometimes spinning is the nastiest thing you could ever do. It's the most nasty and vile thing that you can do to another human being. That's and cool. even, even when you, like, accidental spin, I, I don't even, I mean, Listen, it's just nasty. And with COVID-19 going on and you out here spitting in the crowd. I agree with both of you guys. That they um uh these arenas need to deal with individuals. Either they need to have more law Ready? enforcement in their arena, security, whatever the case is, the guy they need to be ushered out. If they and, see them, point them out. And charge them and get them out of there. And ban that's, them from every arena in the, in America. Where they well, that's not life. Yeah, and that's not that's, this is not the first time we listen. If you've been in, been around, we we're older guys, so we we we've seen it. We've seen a lot of things in our days. Vernon yep. Maxwell, <laughs> Vernon Maxwell is my hero. <laughs> the Malice, Vernon Maxwell, Malice and uh, Palace, the, the Malice the, and Palace. You know, Ar, Ron Artest. You know, he just wasn't having it. You know, you, you you throw him big. There should be some, you know, because again, if this was said player, the said player would have ran up in the stands. If Russell, if, if all the security personnel wasn't there and Russell was able to go up and, and, and get homeboy, then we'll be having a different type of story. I, I, we'll be, oh, right. I was about to say that. Black athlete that. runs up in the stand. They These guys are animals. Mm -hmm. Nope. No what you want it to be done to you? And that's the question I ask every day that I live. What you want it done to you? Absolutely. Anything. Turn the, if the shoe is one thing, I'll give Buddy his credit on this one. He said in a tweet, if the shoe was on the other foot, he is absolutely 100% correct. To all Shout the guys. Out. Go ahead. King James for that tweet. Yeah, for we all don't the shout ones. him out on many tweets around yeah, here. Man. But, but you, <laughs> you, you, this you, one. you, you right on with that one, bro. You right on point on this one. And uh, again, to all the guys that say we we hard on LBJ. No. Nah. LBJ, we we not hard on him. We hard on him. Some of the some of the things that he he says, and you know, he know. you know he he uh, like I said, he's a Texas instrument. But on this in this in this case. He is 100% right on, dead on with that. So, you know, um, fans, you know, and, you know, these guys, these people make excuses, you know, well, they've been locked up all year. What does that have to what do with your that, behavior? Please, please, What's your behavior? Please. Your behavior at a sporting event. You don't act like that, period. I haven't been nowhere, and soon as soon as they, uh, you know, ease up on these restrictions, I ain't go out here speak, spitting on my neighbor just because I was, I was in the house. Yo, exactly. Stop. So... And this is not a white black thing. I heard um, Molly today on first take. <laughs> she says she's uncomfortable because it's it's only white players on white players. No, let me be correct. She said it's only white folks that do it to black athletes, and that's incorrect. I mean, obviously, she doesn't watch hockey and other <laughs> sporting events. That listen, or, listen. Or, let's can't, let's I, forget I, Mon Mon Monica Sellers, Kev. This, Lady came on the tennis court and stabbed him. He stabbed Monica Sellers on the tennis court. Okay. And so, for everybody that don't know who Monica Sellers is, please, yeah, please, uh, y'all elaborate a little more because you know. Kev, you got that? My, Monica Sellers was the, was a great tennis player in her heyday. Came before Serena and um, her sister. She was absolutely um, number one contender all the time. And this mm -hmm. nut, I want to say it was the French Open. He came onto the court. Past security and everything, and took a, a butter knife and stabbed her in the back. Thank God she was okay, but that's a fanatic. And all and and for all you dopes that do it for likes and you run onto the field and stuff like that, you should be dealt with. 
You should be absolutely dealt with. And you should put, you should go live when the police is putting your monkey tail in the back of the damn uh, car and <laughs> taking you away. And you get all the likes you want with your stupid self. That was in 1990. Okay. So and she is not black. Yeah. So this is not a, a, a black white. That's, that's the only a problem I had with her saying that because it's almost like you trying to escalate Instigate. and start instant right. right and start something. And it that's not the case here. The case is that we got idiot fans, as my man Charles Barkley would say, you got idiots <laughs> that do stupid stuff. And no. what you just said, they're fanatics and they just get too you, you too full of yourself of, of doing foolishness. And so then this why, is what happens. So we're gonna spend like another 60 seconds on it, and then we're gonna go to NBA. Okay. Um that's why some sporting events, um, four quarter, they cut the alcohol off. Got Seven, you. Seventh inning. It's off. Cut it. Cut it. They cut it off. Nothing. And you know why uh, we can say, like I said, we've been around the block, and <laughs> me and D Dove have seen a lot of stuff at at um sport event? events without 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 vocation. So I, I don't want to hear it, man. I don't want nobody making excuses for none of these nuts, man. If you go to the game, enjoy the game. Have fun, cheer with your fellow man. Y'all yell, y'all scream, yeah, yell for your team. Like how the 15,000 was at MSG the other night, which was beautiful. Um, we'll get into that in a second, but just enjoy the game, man. With that said, let me go to the NBA. Um, the NBA, the National Basketball Association, uh, their playoffs have started, and yo, my New York Knickerbockers tied the <clears throat> excuse me, they tied the series up against the Atlanta Hawks. Uh on the last night, um, it was touch and go. Um, let me just give you overall the um, Brooklyn Nets. They're up 2-0 against the Boston Celtics and they best of seven. The Dallas Mavericks are up 2-0 against the Los Angeles Clippers who lost on purpose to play Dallas. Mm, mm, mm. Portland and Denver tied at one. The LA Lakers and Phoenix are tied at one. Chris Paul got hurt again. Um, and the Miami and Milwaukee are, it's 2-0 Milwaukee and Miami is down by 11 at, um, in Miami. Um, B-Dub, we'll lead off with you. What you think about, um, some of the playoff series going? Listen, you know, I'm a diehard Knicks fan and the Knicks, you know, I've, I've been watching them all year. They came out game one real, um, you could tell there's some of these guys first time, as you, yeah. you know, it was, I spoke about Julius Randle. He had, he didn't have such a good game, but Alec Burke and um, shout out to D Rose, man. D Rose has, uh, D -Rose has he, jumped he's into been the balling. You know, his, this, his first stint with the New York Knicks wasn't as good, but the second stint. Yes. Um, I don't know what he's found. He's found something. He's just doing the things that he needs to do to get this team rolling and um being a leader yeah being a, absolutely being a leader and um um i think eventually he's going they he's going to probably be in the starting lineup because uh alpha Payton is having a uh tough time um he's been having a tough tough year he started off pretty good but then he's been struggling as of late um but the Knicks are the Knicks are doing good. Uh, I think this, this series is going to go seven. Um, uh, last night game, yo. Let me just tell you, the fans in Madison Square Garden, the, the 16,000 they had, has been awesome. I mean, you can't say nothing, uh, anything more about them. L and listen, let me let me interrupt. You. Go ahead. Let me, let me interrupt you, Sean D. For those that don't know, man, you know those are the sound of voice. Theoretically, the Knicks have not been good in 20 years. They had that one moment with Melo and um, what's the name? Smith that? and um, the boys. Yeah, Tyson Dude, Chandler, Chandler, no. Tyson from, Chandler. From, from Phoenix, right? Yeah. They had that one year, and that was it in 2011 or 12. Um, but Jason that, Jason Kidd was with them too, right? That, yeah. Um, or Chauncey and Billups. My, and no, Stoudemire, was Billups. And Stoudemire, Billups. Stoudemire, remember Stoudemire was with them. And Stoudemire, right? Yeah. So, but Stoudemire was a shell of himself by that time. Yeah, he was done. He was done. So, but getting back to the point, the Knicks have not. This is the first time in eight years they won a playoff series, playoff mm -hmm. game. Mm -hmm. This is the first time in like 
20 years. Understand this. Mm-hmm. That they have been significant. And they wasn't even supposed to do anything this year. No, we nobody expected them oh, to nobody be expected that. Fourth, again, a fourth again, seed again, in the Eastern right, Conference. In the words of Eric, the 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 procrastin the, the not procrastinators, the uh prognosticators or whatever you call them, the people that says whoever the analyst says the Knicks uh, they win twenty games that'll be good. The Knicks want to win a forty one games, which is really really a treat and about the same amount of games the Lakers won. Yeah, and. So to see that, you know, and, you know, everybody said this cliche, hey, the Knicks are good, the league is good. No, for real. When the Knicks is good, the league is absolutely a lot better. And, you know, shout out to the Knicks and um, the general manager for getting together. Um, Leon Rose and uh, Leon Rose. Steven, I, don't know what they doing with, I don't know what they're doing with the owner, but the owner's falling back. Maybe he's messing with the Rangers too much because the Rangers done fired up, fired all their um, yeah, New York Rangers. They done fired everybody on the hockey side. But um, yeah, Leon Rose and um, again, I I I gotta say this about um Tom Thibodeau, man. I, to me, I when they hired him, I, not that the Knicks have won a championship, but I had that same feeling in 1995 with Joe Torre when he became the Yankee manager. I was like, oh god, man, this retread dude. He didn't do nothing with the Mets and he didn't do nothing with the California Angels. That's what they was called at the time. He didn't do nothing with the Atlanta Braves. Why are the Yankees doing this? Okay, he's from Brooklyn. So what? But Joe Joe Torre know how to manage those young minds of Joe of uh, Derek Jeter, Bernie Williams, and um, Annie Pettit, and those guys, and, and Jorge Posada. And the Yankees want to win four championships out of that thing, man, and created almost a dynasty. They created a dynasty. Oh yeah, and um, yeah. and. But this just a, a magical, and, and it felt really good. And I, I know we're waxing poetically about the Knicks, but it was awesome to see some buzz in Madison Square Garden, and it's coming from the guys in the orange, white, and blue. I don't know yeah. why they wore those hideous black jerseys last night, but um, I'll be mute. Go ahead, E. Oh, oh, oh I got one more for you um, before I eat, um, just to get around to the. Uh, oh, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, go ahead, D. The Clippers, you guys. I don't want to hear shit. You guys better get it done. I'm not giving up on you guys. I know you're down 2-0. You're acting like there's nothing going. Yo, you're not taking it. You know, it's last day fair. It's all going to be okay. No, guys. No, I'm not having that. No, we put you guys. You guys orchestrated this right here. You know, the whole trade. I got Paul George. You know, Kawhi, you use the man. Use coming for LeBron James. And this is the time now. I'm giving LeBron James all his props because he was waiting for you. And you guys didn't get your job done. And it looks like you're not going to get it done against Luca, who's taking you out of school. Taking you out of school. So um that series, keep an eye on. Uh yo, shout out to uh the Utah Jet. Oh, that game last night, man. My God. I uh, I looked at the final 141 to one <laughs> bro what the f- they they are a different team when they are hitting shots man it's 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 unreal it's that's, that's I like I almost I almost want to say that's like baby golden state man because when they hit those shots guys, <sighs> yo oh my god so i mean that series is oh it's touch and go they won one tied tied up you know Miami, Milwaukee. I think Milwaukee's going going to get out of here. They're going. They're going. I mean Milwaukee's going to win the series here. They they up. Um, Brooklyn. They doing what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to handle business, and they're doing what they're supposed to do. The Lakers and Phoenix. Uh, that's a good one. AD came to play the other night. Uh, we'll see with that. That I still I expect the uh, Suns to win the series. It should go seven. I don't know if it's anybody else I'm missing. Um, well, go ahead, E. Um, first and foremost, yo, the Knicks, man, I, I'm, I'm sorry. And any ball player will tell you. You can ball anywhere, but when you are at the garden and you feel that buzz, there's nothing like it, son. There's nothing like it. Um, so Who's shout buzz? Out. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 a different, it's a different feel, man. Um, watching it, hearing it, man, they, they sound like they, they're, they're packed out, man. It, it's, it's, I love it, man. I love it. Um, 
I know D said you got the Knicks in seven. I got the Knicks sweeping the rest of this. It's going to be out of here in five. I'm sorry. Yo, no no disrespect to Trey Young and them boys, but they are just getting here just like the Knicks are. And the, to me, the key difference is the Knicks play defense. When they get down to it, nobody plays defense like our Knicks. So I'll leave that with that. Um, Milwaukee and Miami, this is not the bubble. Get Jimmy Butler out of here. Um Philly Wait, and Washington, Philly, get Washington out of here. Shout out to Bradley Bill. He's doing it all, but he can't do it by himself. We we've no. been said that. Um he and Westbrook, you know, you you didn't you don't deserve no popcorn thrown on you or anything like that. But I, I'm gonna wait till next week. I'm gonna wait till you heal up and get better and see what you do in the next week or so, man. Because um, I'm coming for you next week. All that triple doubles, all that hype, everybody talk about this that third. We said it here. All that is fine and dandy. Can you do that? Can you get it done? Like 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 Stephen A. Guy said on that 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 show there. Um, can you get it done when it matters? Can you get it done in the playoffs? Yeah. All that stuff through the regular season, I appreciate it as a fan mm -hmm. because you come to play every night. I appreciate that. But now this is your 10th, 11th, 12th year in the league. It's time to it's it's time to divvy over into the playoffs, man. So um and I'm gonna say this: uh, we we talked about this. D, the Memphis Grizzlies, <laughs> when they cannot get stops, when guys are shooting all over them, it seemed like they tap out early. They try, but it, you you could tell that they was defeated by halfway through third quarter, probably earlier than that. It it, it was a wrap. Um, and to piggyback on what you said about the Clippers, do not you. First and foremost, you got what you asked for. Be careful what you asked for, because you may just get it, okay? Don't think that Luca and them boys, Tim Hardaway and them guys, they got shooters over there. Quiet as kept. Nobody has said this. I have not seen anybody say this. The Dallas Mavericks are kind of constructed similarly to how a LeBron James team would be constructed. You got a guy that can do it all on the floor. He could get to any spot that he want to. He could he could facilitate to all, all his players at any given time, and he has shooters all around him. Yeah. So um, Clippers, if you think you wanted Buddy last year, you claim that you want him this year. You can't even get Buddy Junior. You can't even get past him. So what you gonna do? Against, what you do against Buddy with, if you get to him? Come on, man. Come on, man. And and I'm gonna just say this to end it all. Um, what I would love to see, and I'm sure every Nick fan, every Net fan, every bandwagon fan, every casual fan out there is going to love to see. I want wow. to see Brooklyn versus New York. That is going to be the craziest scene since the Subway series, my guys. Do you understand what I'm saying to y'all? We yeah. have not had a buzz yeah. like that in forever. To have two teams rocking like this? Yeah, potent offense against potent defense. That, that would have to go against the Eastern Conference uh, championship. So. Uh, Who's stopping Brooklyn until they get there? I, I'm, I'm gonna just pose that question in y'all opinion. Who's stopping Brooklyn until they get oh, there? Do, do, let me ask you something. Do they reseed after after, or they go in a bracket? Or who knows? I don't know. Uh, who knows? Well, I guess well, I guess I'll hold that question until we get there. No, yeah, bro. because you know the NBA. Oh, the NBA, they they pull some style, rabbits bro. out their hats. And from, from what I'm looking like, they look like they play in their bracket. So, uh, if the Knicks were to get past Atlanta, they would face um, they would face. If. Yeah, they, yeah. They, I'm getting ready to do my day. They would face uh, the winner of the Philadelphia Washington series. Uh, yeah, okay. Philadelphia is tough. Uh, I need I need to speak on. Um, Philadelphia's tough, man. They, they, they. Doc Rivers got them playing pretty good, and uh, again, they, uh, they playing Washington, Washington with uh, you know, yeah, like I, I agree with you with Russell Westbrook, man. He, he, you know, great in the regular season, seems to get missing during the playoffs, man. And he has had multiple times, multiple chances. I think the, yeah multiple chances to get it done and he's been paired with dominant Great players, players. Yeah. so i mean people like him if this was patrick ewing he would patrick ewing say man i wish i had uh played with the james harden or played with uh a uh, uh, chris no he didn't play with chris paul did he no no but anyway the plays are uh bradley bill 
you know, players of that stature, you know, he you he can't say that he hasn't had players. Everywhere he's gone. I Everywhere mean, he's going, he's he's had players, man. Can, he's had people. Can you imagine Chris Paul and a Kevin Durant? Does he don't play for most of No. Ooh. Can you imagine a Chris Paul? I mean, we see it now with Devin Booker. He, he's like a younger version of Bradley Beal. Yeah. And the, the, and the they, knock on. Go ahead. Oh no, I was just gonna say. I'm um, uh, again with, with Chris Paul. It's always the, the knock for me with him is that you can never stay healthy, my guy. I need you to stay healthy. You are, you. So, let me let me get back. Let me adjust this thing here. Chris Paul. Phoenix Suns, let me tell y'all something, okay? If there's anybody in the NBA right now in 2021 that needs low management, it's Chris Paul. Please give it yeah, to me next year. Give that Please. man. <laughs> Please. I want to see this man in the big game and see what he can do in the big game, in the big dance at 100%. That's what that's I a, That's 100% facts, uh, E. I think that's a good point. If anybody that needs low management, and because and it's only because we see him get hurt so many times, and – his best chance was that Houston team with uh, James Harden, and I believe they was they went seven games and and but he got hurt. And uh, hurt Chris Paul is a tremendous games. player, man. And he he gave he gave Phoenix exactly what they needed. And like I said, you know, again, you, you talk about MVP. I wouldn't have a problem. I would not have a problem voting for that man for MVP because what he's done with that team. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, people say people, you know, it's whatever, you know, you, they get they get so intrigued by the shooting and, and, you know, the points and stuff like that. But what does MVP really mean? Does You know, right. to me, you know, what I mean to people, what does it really mean? What so, does it mean to you, Kev? Um, I'll read you this quote. And this is from an alleged MVP. Hold on. Let me read this. It says, I mean, there's none, George says. It's a competition. We got to rise to the occasion. The fact of the matter, we don't. We're done for. But there's no level of concern. We just got to play our game. We got to play through this. We got to incorporate our defense. Luke is going to get his touches. We got to do a better job defensively of just quieting everybody else. That's from Paul George. And the reason why I started off with Paul George and in, in, in my turn of, of talking about the, uh, the NBA and Eric, I'll get to your question. Good question. Um, Paul George is another one, man. He's, He's the missing, playoff. lost in the sauce. Uh, when, when it's time to get with it, it looks like we're, we're, we're flaming out in round one, round two. Um, I'm like, what's up, man? You know, the Shout out to him. He had a good game, though. He had a good game, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But they came up short, man. Y'all wanted, y'all wanted Dallas. Yeah, I wanted Dallas, and sir, you call yourself playoff P. So, hold on. <coughs> black out my screen. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nat got on my screen. Oh, um, yeah, man. Most people don't name their their nicknames, man, and. I don't know, man. The the LA Clippers, man, they are. I think Eric said the other day. What was the comparison you said? The LA Clippers are like what of another sports team? They're always the Atlanta Falcons. The How could Atlanta you forget? Falcons. Yes. You 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 talk all, all this big boy talk, and then you you come up here with your tidy whities on, man. Come on, B. <laughs> come on, B. <laughs> Just can't stop. Man. I mean, y'all wanted I... y'all wanted Dallas. Y'all got them, and now you're down two zero. And y'all lost. And at home. I'm, I'm sorry, Kev. Let me interject real quick. I, I, I got to say, I said it earlier in the week. And I got to say it here. Okay. Tyrone Lou. <laughs> Sir, I have to critique your coaching because your coaching looks like trash. Looks like trash. Not you are trash. Your coaching looks like trash right now. Okay. Why every time I see Luca driving or whatever, you got little Pat Beverly on him. He's bodying Pat Beverly. Could you put one of your two monsters on him, please? And, or are and, they scared? Are they he, scared? He, he's shooting right. He's shooting. He's off the left foot, I believe. I'm not. He's shooting right over him. Shooting yeah. right over him. 
and you're not giving him no help. Yeah. What happened to the great Tyrone Lue, the, the great coach that 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 helped LeBron James win that chip? What happened with that? Oh, y'all guys didn't y'all didn't criticize Doc Rivers. Where oh, you at? I, 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 I was about to. Don't don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. Because if he don't get it done this year with that squad he got, oh yeah. Oh, I'm coming for um, yeah. We yeah. Yeah. We, we criticize everybody across the board. It doesn't yo, matter. Yo, everybody, yo, because you're 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 deemed by these these people as the great coaches and stuff like that. And there's no reason why Ty Lu with that team is down 0-2 at home. At home to Dallas. I'm again, sorry. No, no disrespect to Dallas. No disrespect to Dallas at all. Wait, Dallas wait. is playing phenomenal. Luca. Let's, let's, let's paint the picture here, okay? Before Kawhi Leonard and Paul George got there, okay? Mm -hmm. The LA Clippers was known at that time as the grittiest defensive team in the league because you had guys out there that would just go get it. You're not going to tell me just because Montrez Harrow uh, went went uh, from the red and blue to the purple and gold. Now, now y'all don't know how to play defense. Come on, man, stop, stop. I'm sorry, Kevin. Go no, ahead. You, um, yeah, yeah, no, you're you're good, you're good. I, I'm just saying, the Clippers, y'all need to turn right, turn around. Well, they don't turn around. I can see Dallas getting them out of here in four. Uh, hmm. Denver and Portland, I think that's a very good series. That's tied on one. I still think Denver is going to win. Um, please, and people, you got to remember this. This is a different ball game. You know, people have to travel. You're playing in front of hostile crowds. Crowds. Well, it's up in LA because I, I don't know. The Clippers had cardboard cutouts still and fans. Yeah, I, other. I, I, I guess they still don't have fans out in California. Um, um, yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. LA um, um, series. Well, I guess they'll, they'll you know what? We need to be quiet. Nope. Um, That'll be another excuse. Um, the 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 Suns and the Lakers. I, I see I, the Suns to me is a better team. Yeah, I said it. They they built to be better. I think they're gonna get them out. I think the Knicks. This I think this Knicks and Hawks series is gonna go seven. It's gonna be it's gonna be hard for it. And you know everybody says the Knicks gotta go down to Atlanta. It's, it's that's a, to me another home game for the Knicks. <laughs> yeah, a, a lot of people don't understand that. Like it's, it's a lot. It's a that from New York. Hey, a they lot were, of New York is it, man, in the South. Fulton and Cobb County. So yeah. it's going to be like a, I would say a good 70-30 Knicks um, um, crowd to, to Hawks crowd. Mm -hmm. It's just what it is. It's just what it is. Um, Philadelphia and Washington, Bradley Bill can't do them by himself. What you eat, I think Washington's going to get him on four. The Nets are doing what they're doing. Um, um, Eric's boy, Jason Tatum, he, he Tatum. came out. He came out smoking that first game, and that was it. Star, where you at? You can't come out one game, baby. You can't do that, B. You going back to Bean Town now? Hey. You, you gotta, you gotta, you. Hey, let, let, let's be clear, okay? Right. These guys, these, we have not deemed these cats superstars, okay? Let it, let nope. it be known right here. I don't know if I said it on the air or not. In my humble opinion, I think there are two, only two clear-cut superstars in this league. One is LeBron James. The other is Kevin Durant. Everybody else is a tier under. Okay. My my thing with being an MVP, being a superstar, is when you go out there and you give it your all, you you score 28 points or whatever have you, you get your team to rally around you. That's why Paul George is not it. Okay. Uh, he had a great game, but his great game was isolated because his team, again, did not show up. Go ahead, D. And that's a no. good point that's a, that you made yeah. because a lot of people, you know, we just, just go out here, everybody's a superstar. And my thing is, if you can't put a post, your your handprint on the game and be that guy to take over, and it, not just one time, I mean, it's constantly, man. Like, Look at Kevin Durant the other night, that, that first game. Do you game understand? One. Okay, go ahead. Look at game one. He Absolutely. was, we, and we was watching it together, right? We said, yo, I was Durant, like, what's, what's Durant, going on with Durant? Durant? This, yeah, he's easy. Either he's off or he's hurt or there's something not right with his games or he's that middle, on a decline. That middle of the second quarter, he started cooking. He started cooking and then that was it. You, you <laughs> could tell the difference of a guy and and, 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 and talking about a superstar and you 100% correctly. When LeBron is, is cooking, when he's on his... You can't stop that dude. I, 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 you can't stop him. I, I, I was, I would say this: if he keeps on doing this and he propels Denver to 
the championship, Jokic. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I just, yeah, you're right. I, I just, I just need to see it. You know what I'm saying? Denver is Atlanta Falcons 2.02. Yeah. I know, I know they down. They man Jamal Murray, but again, when you when you supposed to be that guy, you supposed to rally the guys around him. Now, I know Da has always been talking about Michael Porter Jr. That boy is he's playing phenomenal. Yep. We need more. We need more. Yeah. And you I got like Aaron Dane. Gordon out there. You, we need more. I love. I love Dame too, but you know, again, you got Dame is right. Yeah, he's. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. Um. And, and Curry, I will, I will, because the way, because of the simple fact of how Steph Curry has changed the game of the NBA forever, I'll yeah. throw him up there too. Oh because yeah. Because just for this year alone, people, Golden State was out of it. It was done. He was hurt. They, they, Draymond Green had put the towel over his head. He was taking low management classes. No. <laughs> they Wiseman got hurt, and then and then Curry got got the cooking. He gave him that chef. Curry cooking and 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 they almost they almost got to the playoffs. I mean, hey man, that's that's true. You know what? And I heard an analyst this week try to try to say that yo Curry's yo he's just nothing without he needs. I'm like, yo man, that dude has changed the NBA man with the three point shot. When you think of oh he's taking a shot from a logo, you think of Steph Curry first. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? He's the one that created this stuff, man. And so let me get uh, Eric asked me, and I don't want to sidetrack his question. Uh, MVP, I think the most valuable player of a team is a person, and I'll use DW's, DW's words, person who can put their stamp on the game, man. You know, that when it's time to take the game over, yeah, you could be a stat stuffer and you can, you get this and get that. Doesn't, doesn't mean anything. What does, it's the most valuable player. What does those stats how do they enhance the the, the play of, of your team? Everyone, right? Of everyone. So, how much did Paul George had last night? How much he had? 32, 42? What did he had last? The other night, the he had a uh, what twenty? He played a, played a good game. Not enough for for him to be calling himself playoff P. No, no, no. Yeah. He played tonight. They played tonight. Right. Uh, playoff. But the other that. night, the other night he had like twenty eight, and I think Kawhi had. He had a lot. They could bomb for like almost 50, 60 points, I think. Something, yeah. something to that effect. But they still didn't get it done. So that's that's my definition of most valuable player in any sport. You know, what is your impact on the game? What 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 does it take for you to to you know propel your team to um right, those and right now uh Giannis is you know Giannis is doing a, a great job. And I think last year was a uh, okay, bad taste know. in his mouth. The bubble was an anomaly, but you know the bubble I, again. I don't. Yeah, we, we, I think I'm not even going to touch it. I'm not even going to go into. It. But whole podcast well, of bubble. Yeah, the, <laughs> for everybody who you know think that was the toughest, roughest like, last year. I mean, come on, dog. You, we'll we'll you, save it for standalone, man. We'll, we'll yeah, save you, it. You, you ordered your French box. toast upstairs, and you came downstairs in the slippers, man. Give me a break, man. Oh, stop. <laughs> Yo, man, we got we got to go. We got to get on the NBA, man, man. We gotta we gotta roll with the with Major League Baseball. Hey, as of last week, there was another no hitter. <laughs> oh yeah, my boy. <sighs> yeah, man, baseball's got a bunch of no hitters going. We're gonna look at the um, Power Twenty rankings of um, baseball. Um, Eric, your White Sox, man, they got swept by the Yankees this weekend. Hey yo, let me let me let me yeah, let me explain uh, something to y'all. Uh, okay. <laughs> let me explain something to y'all. Right. Everybody was hitting me up, yo, son. What's going on <laughs> yeah. with your white socks, son? Like, yes, yo, B, yo, they lost to the Yankees, dog. Like, they didn't lose to the Royals. They didn't get swept by the Tigers. They lost to the Yankees who were red hot. Who I think all of us said was going to get hot at some point or another. Okay. Yo, man, that's because uh, these these people want to jump out the window, man. Just yo, man, let it cook, man. It's a yeah. marathon, man. Baseball is a marathon. Y'all exactly. already bugging in, in early May. Yeah, I gotta I, cook, I, man. That's why I said, man. Where where we at in the standings? We still in first place. We rocking right on along. Okay, 
I didn't say that we the White Sox was going to win 120 friggin' games. I did not say that. All I said was when 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 the smoke settles, the White Sox are going to be in the playoffs, and we're going to see what happens after that. Okay, yeah, we lose a, we lose three games to the Yankees. Was it three or four? Three games yeah, to yeah. the Yankees. Yeah, got swept. Yeah. Okay, we got swept. That's all okay. good. That's all good. You know what I'm saying? Oh, let me let me be. Uh, are you finished? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, well, I, I guess sorry. I am. I mean. It's, <laughs> but again like i said I it's Kev, before you get to that point i'm like yeah. yo again like i said man i said this is early podcast baseball don't start getting good until after july 4th so guys relax let relax as my man aaron Rodgers said relax it's and only may 27th today you know I, I could be petty i could be petty ruxman and be like you know, I'm a Yankee fan first and foremost. I just picked the White Sox because, you know, I, I like to I like to adopt a team every year who's going to do what or whatever and see, you know, see what what, what my uh. Oh, but you call us casual fans? Yeah, I do, and y'all are. What you talking about? Oh, yeah, exactly. Thank you. Why don't you? Um, oh no! Oh no! Oh no! But now nah, what I what I was gonna say was you know. Um, for all the cats that came, you know, that came at me, you know, you know, man, most of y'all are, are Yankee fans. Now, I'm not talking about my brothers up here. I'm talking about these other fly-by-nights that, you know, hit my phone up. Yo, man, y'all could barely beat the Rays. You could, you struggling right now with the Blue Jays. And you already man. lost the first game. So please, please, yeah. miss me, okay? Worry about your division. You got three from us. That's cool. We'll see y'all again. Exactly. I'm not, I'm not going to go that route, though, you know, because it's all love. Like you said, it's a marathon, man. Yeah, it's a marathon, marathon, baby. Let me let me read this interesting stat by um, stat by stats I just got over the phone. Over his last four games, Bernal Tatis Jr. of the Padres is batting 786 with 12 RBIs, and he's also walked three times. He's the Hold on. Man. Wait, 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 Kev. No, I don't. You, you got to say that with some emphasis, B. He's batting what? Over the last four games. Fernando Tatis Jr. of the San Diego Padres is batting 786 with 12 RBIs and also has walked three times. He's the, under first player at bat. Um, he's the first player to bat 750 or better with 12 plus RBIs and three plus walks over a four game span since Bayruth did it on July 28th through the 31st, 1932 season. I was just about to say, do we understand what those numbers mean? Like, I, I some of these other fans probably don't understand. Casual what, fans don't. Don't understand. Seven, Seven out of ten times, he's getting a hit. Okay. You put it in perspective. This guy is, like, if it's not bad, he's balling with the bat. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, this guy is, this guy is and, nice. And, and let's be clear, he's not doing it against cupcake pitching either. So when when guys are throwing, seem like they throwing no hitters uh twice a week, he's he's always on base. Mm -hmm. Always on base. Man, so let me get to the uh MLB's uh power 20 rankings uh week seven. Um they got them listed as this. The Padres are number one. Um the Red Sox are number two, the Red Sox are 73 over their last 10 games. The Eric's uh, Chicago White Sox, they was previously number one last week. They have dipped down to number three. Um, number four is the Dodgers. Um, that was a very funny series they played with the Houston Astros. Um, there was a lot going on, a lot said. I thought there was going to be some benches um, clearing. Um, but um, and I think uh, Clayton Kershaw, he had the last say um, mm -hmm. for his, his, his pitch game. Hey, the Giants are amazing this year. Um, the Giants keep winning. They're, they're number five ranked. And then you have the Astros, six, Yankees, seven, the Devil Rays, excuse me, the Rays, um, eight, the Oakland Vagabond A's, uh, nine, the St. Louis Cardinals, 10, Cleveland Indians, 11, Blue Jays, 12, New York Mets, 13. Mets have been hit with a lot of injuries. They're feeling like a double A team right about now. They have a lot of injuries what's going on. And your man, he's he's not hitting the the shortstop man. It's um, God, I can't think of that guy's name. Uh, Lindor. Lindor. Lindor got uh, turned to the Mets the other night, and they was booing him. He he flied out to left field. He had the bases loaded, and they was giving him the business. And um, 
rightfully so. You signed for a lot of money, sir. And I know that's a lot of pressure, but <laughs> you got to produce. You signed up to it, man. Signed up for it, dog. So it's, 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 it's bad when your glove is better than your back. And I know it's a long season, but uh, yeah, yeah. We we uh, the Mets didn't sign you for your glove, sir. No, that's signing for your back. Um, the Brewers are fourteen, Cubbies are fifteen, the Braves are sixteen, Phillies seventeen. Marlins 18, uh, Reds are 19, and the Washington Nets are 20. So that goes um, MLB. Um, Eric, you said the the Blue Jays beat the uh, yeah the, the, the Yankees. Um, the Blue yeah, Jays the first game. Yankees. They can't beat them. They can't beat them in the race for whatever reason. They they just can't beat them, and I find Yo. that hilarious, man. Um, let me go to the standings real quick. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. Tampa Bay is on top of the um, American League East. They with 32 wins. Boston Yankees, Toronto, and Baltimore is bringing up the rear. The White Sox are in, uh, a game up in the uh, AL Central above Cleveland. They 28 and 20 uh, above Cleveland, Kansas City, Minnesota, and Detroit. Well, Kevin, what happened to the Kansas City Royals? What did I tell y'all weeks ago? Yeah, they wasn't going to withstand that. Yeah. Come on, they, man. They they have lost. Uh, well, they won six to four, but they they they're dipping a little bit. Oakland is leading the American League West um, with Houston, uh, Seattle, L.A., and Texas bringing up the rear. You got the Mets, the National League East. I mean, despite the Mets injuries, man, the Mets are yeah, they're doing pretty good, man. They're two and a half up on, but the the National League East is not very good this year. It look like the, the Mets that's, look like they can get true. their their injuries together. They would absolutely be running away with this thing, but we'll see. <laughs> Can Go we ahead. point out? I just want to point out so I know casual fans, y'all don't look at the standards like we do. Okay. Uh oh. It is amazing. Pun intended, because mm-hmm. we're talking about the Mets. But it is amazing that the Mets are 24 and 20. They've only scored 148 runs. Eric, I'm I'm looking at that right. Uh, I, I, and, oh, and everybody else is in the twos. Except for Pittsburgh, but that's just Pittsburgh. They they have 161, but they're in the cellar. The Mets are in first place. First place with that's that's, so, that's you know what that means, y'all. If y'all down with baseball, and y'all follow it. The Mets pitching is on point, so they're winning games one nine two one three two. Mm-hmm. They're finding ways to win games, and when they get Alonzo back, and when they oh get- no, that's not enough for these guys that you know three two <laughs> two one. I need. A lot of scoring. What you need. <laughs> I I really don't care. I mean, baseball is what it is. If you don't like it, man, you know you can go about. Oh, you know what I wanted to notice. Um, I forgot what play it was the other night. It pissed me off while we were on this baseball segment. Was it the so, ground ball to third baseman? Third base line? No, not that one. St. Louis. Was it oh. the, the they, ground they, ball the first for they the did, Cubs? They did no, not that one either. I, I, I'll find it here in a second. There was a play, there was a, there was a, I hate replay with baseball. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. So we all play baseball some kind of way, right? Those out mm-hmm. there in podcast land, you know, if you play some any kind of organized um, baseball, right? So the runner slides in to second on, on, on a, on a, what's it called? On a, on a st- on stolen base. So like they've done for 150 years in baseball, right? If the, if the player beats the ball, 10 Uh, times out of 10, he's what? He's safe, right? Safe, yeah. Safe, right? Mm -hmm. The umpire yells, safe. Let me look in this camera real quick. Let me look at y'all. He yells, safe, right? Umpire yells, safe. Now with these challenges and replay, almost like the, you know, the stupid, you know, Des Bryant, you know, is a catch and all this stuff. That the 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 runner came off the base a little bit. He kept tagging and tagging them, tagging. And they said, "Oh no, oh no, we we want a re- <laughs> we want a replay." And Yo. they granted they granted the team the replay, and they did frame by frame by frame. And the umpire said, "Upon further review, the runner is out in second for 150 years." We have been saying if the if the player beats the ball. And he's on the base, safe. safe. What are we doing, baseball? But I think, I, I, my personal opinion. If I had to, I, I, hold on, D. I know you're burning up with this. <laughs> if I was the rules person in baseball, whatever you want to call them, 
I would not be doing that with no, I I no, 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 no. No. No, you do foul balls, you do home runs, that's it. Yeah, you go ahead, man. I, I was pissed off by that. Man. You go shouldn't ahead. be challenging uh safe uh balls and strikes, um things of that nature. Foul balls, it should just be foul balls, you know, things of that nature. But to backtrack, no, Kev, they told y'all this years ago that they didn't want replay back in the day because we were saying it's going to be doing all the things that we don't we don't want for baseball. We don't replay, adds more time to the game. You got to keep on looking, frame, you breaking it down. So that extends the time, time to the game. All the stuff that people was complaining about, about the game is too long but we won't replay. See, this is what happens. That's why you should just left it alone. And just, if you want to do a challenge, we challenge that fair ball, not fair ball, as far as the polls, stuff like that. That should that should be the only thing to be challenged. Everything else, it should be, if the umpire missed it, he missed it. That's just how it is. Go ahead, e. This is what happens when you change things for who? The casual fans. Casual. Casual. You want to speed everything up so they can sit their asses down and watch your sport when they're not even watching your sport anyway. And, so you're making the first all place. these changes. You're pissing off the you're pissing you're pissing off the diehard fans to appease these casual fans, and the casual fans don't give one iota about your sport anyway. Yo, they only there for one night. They in one night in town, man. That's, That's it. it. Casual fan gets around, man. It's like Tupac, man. They mm -hmm. get around. They get around. Kid. They go to every sporting event just just to be a part of some shit, and they don't care. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at all the casual Miami Heat fans uh, years ago. Where they at oh, now? Oh God, please. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just had to bring that White up. White hot and all that other yeah, shit. White hot, y'all, y'all. We at the ice Cleveland. Cold. Look at you. We at the Cleveland. There. We having drinks. Here. Everything is nice. Oh, LB. Come on, man. <sighs> I only know a few diehards, man. Shout There's out only two. Me. Shout out to my man Christian. He's only he's the only one I know. That's the only one I know as a as a diehard uh, Miami my Heat man fan. Christian. And shout out to my dude Fred, who I work with, man. Yo, diehard Miami Heat fans, man. Oh, rest but, these uh, cats, I saw, man. I, I saw that the other night. I'm just trying to look while you was talking. That pissed me off. You still second. You the the runner beats the beats the ball ten times out of ten. Hundred fifty years of baseball. He's safe. As he's popping up, popping up, he's you know how you put the, the tag on the him? tag on the ball, yeah. Oh, he's he's out. <laughs> Yo. So it's almost frame by frame of that of that. I was about to cuss. Um, I'm trying not to. Um, of that of of the yeah. catch. Remember the thing with yeah. um. Let it go. <laughs> um, <laughs> you see, mom, they're trying to curse. Oh, uh, of Des Bryant and, and Green Bay. Y'all remember that, right? Yo, oh, yeah, the catch. You know, yeah, he, yeah. He, he was it a, a catch? Or was it a catch? He made yeah. a football, a football move. move. What, the, what are we doing? Oh, fucking up the game. That's what we're doing. That's what we're fucking Pretty up the much. game. That's all they doing. I'm taking what Dorian's are, place. <laughs> what are we doing, man? Hey, um, shout out to um, shout out to MLB. Let me move um along to the National Hockey League, man. The National Hockey League, their playoffs are going on too. That's right. We talk hockey on this podcast. You know it. We talk okay. it. And shout out to them Islanders, baby. Shout out to the to the boys in orange, white, and blue out there in Long Island, out there in Uniondale, man. They got rid of the Pittsburgh Penguins yesterday. The Owls won the series four to two. They face the Boston Bruins. So that should That's be, a very, be tough. <laughs> very, very good, interesting series. Um, the Edmonton Oilers uh, got swept by the Winnipeg Jets. See ya. That they did. The mm -hmm. Jets got them out of here. Um, I thought this was going to be very a very good series. Um, the the defending Stanley Cup champs, the Tampa Bay Lightning, they played a really tough series against the up and starting Florida Panthers. The Panthers have been a losing organization for a very long time in, in South Florida, and um, they took the they took the Stanley Cup champs to six games and um, very close tight um, win last night. Um, Tampa Bay was able, excuse me, Tuesday night. Tampa Bay was able to get the win. Um, Toronto looks like they're going to close out the um, Canadians tonight. X series is three to one. Toronto and well, they down three one right now. It's three to uh, one. Okay. Yeah, it's three one Canadians right now. 
Um, they in um, yeah, they, they about to start the third period in a minute. Yeah, Canadians is up to nothing early, so yeah, uh, yeah. Um, the Hurricanes the play tonight. Hurricanes and yeah, Predators. Yeah, that that honestly. Go ahead. Honestly, Kane, Kane's is up three two, so they looking to close out. I I I you know I live near um, Kane Nation, whatever they call themselves. <laughs> Uh, at the PNC Arena, I passed by there on my way home from from work, and I lived in Nashville. So that that series right there is uh, near and dear to my heart, man. Cause uh, yeah, the Predators, man, the Predators have always been on the brink here and there, very very often the last I say five ten years, and seem like they can never get over the hump, man. So to see them in the in the Hurricanes seem like they trying to bring back their old glories. So, uh, I, I will, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and make this statement right here. Um, this is just my my opinion. I think whoever comes out of uh, that series is gonna win the whole thing. Mm. Mm, okay. Uh, the Canes and um, Nashville series? Yeah. Okay. And we do got a game seven with the uh, Minnesota Wild in uh, Vegas. I, I was yeah. about to say, Vegas is tough too. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you know, you know, shout out to Vegas. Um, what was that? Two years ago, their first first year in the league, they went to the Stanley Cup Finals. Man, mm-hmm. I thought that was bananas. In sports, the Golden Knights. They, yeah, they're pretty tough. Tough, um, tough. The Avalanche got rid of the Blues in four nothing. So they're the Avalanche are waiting on. Yeah. The A- um, Avalanche is just sitting pretty. They wait waiting for Sunday. So whoever. Uh, yeah, who wins the the Golden Knights in the um, Minnesota Wild? Um, theme. Um, but shout out to the Islanders. The Islanders will be moving into a new arena in Elmont, New York, right at uh, right next to Belmont Park, the um, horse racing park. Uh, um, they'll be moving into their new digs. So um, shout out to the Islanders. I know I'm glad as as a as a New Yorker, I'm glad that they was able to keep the the Islanders out of Long Island. It just felt different. Them it didn't even feel like them playing in Brooklyn. Um. Whatever I didn't, I didn't even understand that. Yeah, yeah, I understand it. I mean, I know the Nassau Coliseum, which was built in the early seventies, is old, old and decrepit. Uh, I'm glad that the um they was able to get together. Nassau County was able to get together, and they they built a arena in Nassau County in, in Elmont, New York. And um, yeah, that's where they belong. They belong right on the island. Long, right Long Island. They are a Long Island team, and and when they play the the Rangers and the Devils, man, it's it's really something special to see. You know, to hear the Islanders, and I'm glad they're getting a new building. Um, shout out to all the you Islanders fans, and I know a few. My man Eric, Eric Hag, Hag as we call him. Yo, man. Um, shout out to it's good to see them in the playoffs, man, because they had a long drought too. So yeah, they, they had a long drought too, man. Last couple um, of years, even. Oh, um, e, I know you talk about Ovechkin a lot. They said, um, uh, is is Ovi going to sign back with the Caps after this? What you call it? They, they they better hope and pray that he does, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's gonna be interesting, man, because uh, it looked like it looked like <laughs> he was looking around like, yo, do y'all remember how to play hockey around here? What are y'all doing? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And and for a guy of that talent, um, Washington. Oh. I mean, they they won the chip a few years ago or whatever. But y'all know me. It, you know, it's been Sid the kid, and it's been Ovi. Um, for when they came out, when they came into the league, and it's kind of like the Drake and <laughs> it's kind of like Drake and uh, uh, Jay Cole, man. You got the one that's been dominant, you know, Sid the kid. I think he got what two or three chips, something like that. And Ovi only sure. has the one, so you know, it's like you know, Ovi got that cloud over his head or whatever. So uh, I don't know. I I I hope he stays. But um, if he see fit, man, I'm 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 sure that every team is going to open up their pocketbook to get him. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some got talent, and some don't. <laughs> um, but now nah, hockey should, should be very interesting. Uh, uh, it's it's I'm glad that they are. Everybody's back. All the major sports, they're back. You know, slowly but surely getting fans. In some of the buildings, the NFL said they will be playing every – all 30 teams will be playing at 100% um, with fans in the stands. And, you know, let me let me do my, my thing here. You know, for those that say that, you know, it's whatever, whatever, man, you don't have to go to the games, man. It's, it's, it's okay. 
to watch him at home. So you don't feel like, you know, whatever, you know, and I'm pretty sure the National Football League is taking um, stands and measures to make sure that everybody is safe at the game. And, um, you know, that's all I got to say about that. Um, gentlemen, um, before I move to golf, because, yep, we talk about golf, and I also play golf too. Um, anything on that, what I just said, before I move on? Um, as far as the NFL and they, yeah, one hundred percent capacity. I, I mean, hey, man, if they if they feel they could do it safe, so be it. You know, um, so far so good. Look like you know half the the United States is, va- is vaccinated, so they started to let things uh, open up, and you know, uh, for the most part, you know, fans are starting to go back, and you know, people just want to go back to regular, and you know, hopefully, as long as we could do it safely, I'm. I don't see no, what's the, you know, what's the big deal? Go ahead and, and you know, take the, you know, take, take the necessary precautions. E? Yeah, I, I just, uh, I agree wholeheartedly with Daryl on that one. Um, I don't, I don't, um, why not? You know what I'm saying? As long as they, as long as they do their due diligence and make sure everybody is straight and people at home that's going to the game, make sure you do your due diligence as well. Um, you know, it's, it's time, it's time, it's time to move on, man. Everybody just do their part. That's what we've been saying on this podcast for many, 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 many of weeks, man. Yo, do your part, man. And we can somehow get back to some kind of normalcy. So, um, and I would, I would not be surprised though, if there's not some stipulations on, uh, if you vaccinated, you may get a, a, a discount or something like that. I mean, it would be cool to see being that. Uh, a lot of uh, companies are adding those uh, stipulations as far as being vaccinated is concerned. Wow. They also give it out a million dollars. I forgot what state if you get vaccinated. Am I right, D-Dub? You told me yeah, that. Dog, what, what? That. Yeah, they, they, some lottery or some shit. They... Yeah, lottery for the vaccine, man. Yeah. The vaccine, you get a what? vaccine. What's, what is this at? Shall I go get vaccinated again, my G? <laughs> Double hey, vaccination. We're, we're, moving yeah, right we're moving right along. Hey, all right. All Kev, all right. before you start this golf stuff, <laughs> there was some type of beef. I don't know what the hell was going on. I didn't really. I looked at it and I rolled my eyes and I'm like, I'm I'm gonna let Kev deal with this. I'm not I even. You. I got you. Yes. Yes. Thank I you. Got you. I got you. So on Sunday, um, let me read it from Golf Digest. Oh yeah, at 50 years old, 11 months. Um, this is from Golf Digest. This is from Alex Myers of Golf Digest. Um, uh, oh, yeah. At 50 years old, 11 months and seven days, he also became the oldest major champion in golf history. That's Phil Mickelson. And with pre-tournament odds beginning from 200 to 1, 200 to, to 301, Phil became the biggest underdog to win a major since Ty Hamilton won a 500 to 1 long shot at the 2004 Open Championship. Again, unbelievable. Um <laughs> I don't know why they keep doing that. Um, <laughs> I keep doing something. But with that said, Phil Mickelson, he's 50 years old. He won the golf. Um, he won the, he won the um, not open championship, but he won the PGA championship on Sunday. It was great to win. Uh, those that, that's not into golf. Um, <laughs> My Phil, bad. Phil Mickelson, he, um, he's kind of um, Tiger Woods. Um, Nemesis on the on, on the on the golf course and um Bill's Kev, been- and, and Kev, please. The one thing I do know, this is not no Tiger Woods big story. Yes, the man is fifty years old. I get it. Congratulations, but he doesn't look like a fifty year old. And this is just not a a big deal as far as I'm concerned. As far as or you trying to make they trying to make it to you know comparison to the Tiger. They, they just want to steal Tiger's shine. They're, yo, this is a good, this, this is nice. He's 50. He won it. He won it. Great. Fantastic. But this is not a Tiger deal. I, I agree. Um, I, I, and I think it puts, a, it puts a black eye on golf because Tiger is nowhere to be found right now. And yet you still trying to bring him into some comparison with, with the guys that are actually winning that's actually playing on the course. Don't do that, man. Phil, yo, shout out to you, Phil. You know what I'm saying? 50 years old. You you won it. You know, you, you're the, I guess, the supreme underdog. 
being that you was <laughs> you was down so heavy. But um, yo, know, hey, but th- 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 there again, that's that's the. Oh, we lose Eric. We lost. We lost our main dude on the trigger. We lost E. Okay, well I'll pick it up for E. It will be back. Um, yeah, he'll be back. Um, well to get back to the beef, basically the beef was so Phil was winning, right? So the PJ was not prepared to see those that watch golf or whoever been to a golf <laughs> golf tournament. I've been I've been to a, a couple, right? I've been right. to you know, in, in Charlotte and and. So whoever's winning on that Sunday, right? That Sunday, large crowds start to follow. Mm-hmm. So um, I can't think of the dude's name. Um, 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 what's his Brooks Kepler. Yeah. Very annoyed that um, Phil's crowd was following him. And yo, man, it's stupid, man. And he said yeah. he, got, he got bumped in the crowd and. And you know he wasn't able to perform and all this stuff, and um, I was like, "Wow, that's, it sounds really petty." And or you just very you know, petty, just yo, know, not want to shout out, you know, my man Phil Mickelson, excuse me for for winning. So I don't know what that's about, but that's what they said. Um, Brooks kept it was he was being very petty, and and what's your thoughts on that game? I I, I don't even know. Kev. I ain't got no thoughts with this. Uh, this Brooks <laughs> Kepta, whatever his name is. Uh, he's another good golfer. But, you know, I think this is a little, uh, little to do about nothing, if I got the story correct. I, like I said, I was side-eyeing it. I heard a lot. Uh, they was making a big fuss about it, but I I didn't think it was much to do about nothing. This and, right here. And it, and it also stems from what they say. It looks like um, his dad... Try him and his dad try to get an autograph from Phil when he was young. Like, like, like no, no, see, almost like almost. Oh, oh no! But you didn't say nothing about Ken Griffey with the Yankees. Yo, yo, I did. I, I, I mentioned Ken Griffey. <laughs> you know, with the autograph and then why he didn't want to play with the. Yo, I get it. You know what? But to me, I'm. He didn't play with the Yankees. Okay, he held. He held his word. Not a story, man. This is not a. This is not a story. This is not. A sports chaser story for us. We're not chasing this nonsense about because you. No, Phil, you won. You won the championship. Yeah, that's we, all we, we care won. about. That's all we care about. You won the championship at fifty years old. God bless you, man. You did a good job. But all this other stuff about because your crowd, I'm not following your crowd. This is bullshit. Nobody gives a fuck. Please. So yeah, I, I don't know. You you had got signed off by mistake. Um, we were saying about Brooks Kepka, you know, basically a little perturbed and, and, and nerd by the fact that Phil Mickelson had his following um, at the turn, and, and you know, mostly on Sundays when the the winner is winning. You know, most of the crowd they follow the person who's winning, and he's a little perturbed by that. He said he got bumped by one of Phil's fanatics, and and you know, D-Dub just went and said, "This is a non-story. I don't even know why we've been chasing this." Uh, it's, yeah. It's nobody, man. Who cares? You got bumped. You didn't get shot. You didn't get <laughs> robbed. You got bumped. Yo, come on, man. Stop. Stop. Yeah, I, I don't have nothing to say about that. I am. I am. <laughs> not, even, not even going to entertain that one. B. Yeah. Real, real quick. This, and we got to everything within ninety minutes. And GF. Um, Tim Tebow. He's got a job. I know we talked about this. <sighs> Yo, let it's, me just break it down for these. Go people. ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. This is no different from you guys in regular jobs like myself and so many millions and millions of Americans that may have a friend here, may have a friend there, and you're looking for a job. And yo, you may not be the most qualified. Matter of fact, I know you're not the most qualified because I've seen people come in and don't know Jack, but but they're uh, able to get a job. Millions and millions. And millions. They're able to get a job because why? Hold on, let me know. I know this. Hold on, you said the what? Millions (laughs) and millions. (laughs) You understand? So 
This um, happens all the time. So why well, are we making a roster spot? <clears throat> Let the rock understand this. You come oh, walking in the rock's locker room. <laughs> yo, 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 man. <laughs> yo, hey, this happens all the time, right? This happens all the time. So I'm not again, I'm not gonna take a dump on Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow's doing what millions and millions. millions of Americans every day. If you got a hook up, somebody, you, you, you got a hook, you use it. And somebody knows, and they, they got him a job. Now, it's up to Tim Tebow to perform. And if he's unable to perform, guess what? If there's a better player out there, I guarantee you, Tebow will be removed from that position because the players in that locker room are going to start saying, wait a minute, coach. This dude right here is a player. And you're going to sit him to put, you're going to start ruffling a lot of feathers and it's, not, it's going to be bad. So, you know, uh, 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 all this stuff will correct itself. So I'm not really sweating it. I already said I've been on record. I said, I don't think he's going to make it all the way. I think somebody will beat him out. But if he makes it, he makes it. I'm okay with it. But apparently a lot of people are not. But go ahead. E, go ahead, and then we're gonna. Yeah, I, I, I agree. It's it's almost like the uh, Tom Thibodeau thing. You know, I'm not gonna jump out of the water. Um, you know, I you know, of course, I'm gonna roll my eyes because I don't think that he's fit. But that's just me. Who am I? You know what I'm saying? Um, but um, we'll 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 see what he got. I mean, he might actually bring something bring something to the team. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what that might be, but it might be a cup of coffee. It might be a, a couple of touchdowns. Who, who knows? But um, yeah, I'm I'm you know I'm, I I I myself try to try to not jump out the gym every time I hear certain things or contracts or, or signings that don't make sense or whatever you know because uh, you know I've been wrong before you know it was, like I said with Tim uh, Tom Thibodeau doing an excellent job with the with the Knicks and you know I had to I had to you know. <laughs> bite my tongue, so to speak, and give that man his props for what he's done. Now, hopefully he doesn't run him into the ground like he's done everywhere else, but that's neither here nor there. Um, hey, I know we off that topic, and I said something the other, last night. I said, man, the Knicks just look tired. I said, they look tired. Yeah, yeah. And, he, and he said, and he did say that. He said, D, what yeah. you just said. Yeah. And Same I said, problem in Chicago. I mm -hmm. said, damn. I said, damn. You right. well, he's got to find that. He's got to find that right kind of that mix. That he got to find that balance. But at the same time, he may not have that the horses. That's why he over, right? He overs extends his players like that. So you know, it's either he's going to have to get more players, so he won't dog. You know, they or they may not run out of gas. So I mean, I think it's going to be a learning a learning adjustment. I know we was off the uh, NBA, but. Yeah. You just made you just brought it to my yeah. attention. Tebow, I, I really I really thought that he was gonna be some kind of coordinator or some kind of like quarterback, not not quarterback, but like a tight end coach or something like that. And then and they then they work him up the ranks. That's what I thought it was gonna be. I didn't I really did not expect this man to be on the field. And I still don't, but we'll see. Okay. I got you, man. No, good show. We had a really good show. Um yeah, man. Very good show. Oops. As minus, always, um, minus, our, minus our guys, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, they'll be back. They'll be back. Shout out to DA and shout out to Mike Millie. Yeah, kid. Boys, um, just letting y'all know um, we can be found at um, sportschasers underscore podcast um, at twitter.com. We can also be found at Facebook Sports Chasers Podcast. Also on uh, what other Instagram Sports Chasers Podcast at instagram.com. We are also on all, all, and I mean all. Drum roll, please. All podcasts, platforms, Apple, uh, you name it, Google, you name it, Spotify. We're on every last one of them now. So as soon as the episode pops up, y'all get it. Yep. Uh, so check us out. out. Shout out to SoundCloud. They've been holding us down since day one. Um, yeah, Max. You know what I'm saying? Shout out and also shout out to all those um SoundCloud artists that I listen to. Um, you know, guys might not be getting radio play, but I listen to you guys. So if you got somebody on SoundCloud, you know, whatever genre of music you listen to a podcast, yo, click them, share them, whatever. Yo, big them up, man. If you, if yeah. you enjoy them, 
And while you're bigging them up, uh, uh, hit like, share, and subscribe with us too, since you rock with us so much, man. You know what I'm saying? Merch yeah. coming soon. You see, hey, I had to, I had to go with the, um, I had to go with the, with the, with the snapback today. Got to show the snapback some love, man. So, yeah, that, that's nice that's, right there. I, I actually like it better than the fitted, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Shout out to um our merchandising guy, uh, merch, uh, merch, one one one. My man, uh, Derek Baxter. Um, we got some merchandise coming. We also got DW. So, so the people. Oh no, no. Oh no, T-shirt. Yes. The oh no. Oh no. Oh, no. For those you know, be you know, y'all hear that voice when I be say, oh no, oh no. Shout out to my niece Kenny because mm. she kind of inspired it with her, see. with her, True. with her little thing when she said, oh God. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> oh God! So I just kind of—that's when she's sick of me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's sick of daddy, kid. Not yeah. uncle, man. But oh uh, man, party shots, man. Guys, great show this week. Uh, we'll start off with E. Uh, what you got for me? Party shots. I ain't got nothing heavy this week, man. Again, with the with everything that's been going on with fans and players, with these athletes and stuff, man. Again, and and all across the world. Please, please, please respect and look out for your fellow man, your fellow woman and child, man. Yeah, still mind your business, but still look out for your fellow man. You know what I'm saying? That's 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 all I got. Another great show this week. Um, shout out to Mike Mills and DA. We'll be back next week. And uh, yeah, man, got another great one in the, in the books. Another great one, episode 83. The dub. Yo, check it. What I'm going to say is, yo, again, yo, mind your business, man. Mind your business. Two, R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Respect one another, man. Oh, my bad. Yeah, that's right, man. Respect one another, man, because this is, this is that's what is that's what it boils down to. Respect. Respect, man. Respect your people. Respect your people around you. I mean, if you ain't got respect, man, we ain't got nothing. We ain't got loyalty. We ain't got no respect. We ain't got we ain't got too much of nothing. So, with that being said, respect your fellow man, and mind your business, and we could get along just fine. We absolutely do. Um, I don't have nothing heavy. Um, just a, a Memorial Day weekend coming up. Um, be safe. Salute those that um that have served. Um, you know, as soldiers, salute to guys. So those that those that served and they they pay those in the price. Um, thank you for your service. I uh, don't doubt. Have any, if you're doing, you're traveling this weekend, just be careful, be safe. Um, you know, that's all I got, man. But uh, Mike Mills, we miss you, kid. Da, we miss you. Um, yes, sir. Back next week. Um, again, I don't have nothing heavy. Just be careful, be safe. And um, as James Eric always say another another one in the books, man. In the books. Also, like, subscribe, share, all that stuff. Uh, we trying to do some things here. You know, we're trying to get this this platform off the ground. Um, we got a lot of people that feel the same way that we feel, and a lot of people doing their thing, man. And um, like again, we're gonna support people who support us, and um, and we um and pretty much. Sports chasers, we support a lot of people. Uh, we, sh- you know, shout them out and all that stuff. So we just want to hopefully people do the same thing for us. And um, you know, look for some great things from us, man. You know, when this this COVID thing is lifting, man, we're gonna try to do some couple of live shows. Yeah, you heard it, live shows. Yeah, we're not only on the same spot, not only, not only on the internet, but also something in person, man. Where we invite a bunch of y'all come come join us. Um, the venue has been um undetermined, but um. We're looking to do something like that and um, see where we can go from there, man. Yeah, we're trying to do it big here, man. But anyway, on behalf of myself, I'm Kevin L. Warren, your host and moderator, also on the panel tonight. And for DA in his absence, Mike Mills in his absence, for my man, Daryl D. Doug Warren, and also James the Angry One Warren. Yo, this is the Sports Chase Podcast. Yo, we'll see y'all next week, man. Peace. Y'all be good. Y'all be blessed. Milwaukee up 20. That's another one who is not a superstar is Jimmy Butler. I, I thought I, I I called you one last year. I, obviously, you were a, super, a bubble superstar. You're out the bubble now. 
<laughs> Bubblelicious. Yeah, Bubblelicious. Bubble of brown sugar. What was that on? Bubble and brown sugar. sugar. That bubble has pop. Look at you now. Yo. Nah, don't look good, man. My head about to go down through yo, man. Hey, man. Yo, I was never really on that that Jimmy. Uh... Yo, man, he willed that team, and that team had no business being where he was at last year. And I mean, actually, none of them teams had any business being where they was at. Have a standalone documentary show on the bubble. Bring out facts and all that stuff. Yo, I'm just telling you, man. It's that. That's not. Just look at this team, man. It's totally. It's totally different. So you you're not gonna tell me this is this is the Milwaukee team that we were supposed to see. You know what I'm saying? Yep. But uh, people keep on telling me, you know, you, maybe, you to... maybe they didn't get the French toast like Miami got. I, I don't know, bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I yeah, guess I they didn't have no, cher- no no strawberries or bananas on it. I guess. I don't know. No whipped cream or nothing. Well, I will say, though, um, the addition of um, Drew Holiday has helped a lot, you know. Oh yeah, Drew Holiday has absolutely helped him out. Well, that's why, yo, man, the people we keep on saying, yo, it's Brooklyn and Brooklyn, but what? I mean, Milwaukee, Milwaukee is gonna be that team, man, because they're gonna 